are these people? Media is complicit, Colin, in the genocide in Gaza, particularly this guy and that guy and the guy behind that guy. Um, <laughs> but Piers Morgan, Rupert Murdoch, some of you who lived through Iraq and Iran understand why these fucking two douchebags are around, you know, um, and you remember what they said about things back then. But, um, Alan McLeod over in Mint Press, um, writes Rupert Murdoch, Israel's most powerful supporter. So you're going to see what that has consequences to. So, but. Yeah, we, I just wanted to bring this because we've seen a lot of our brothers and sisters head over to Talk TV and its affiliates and not have a great time. So we're going to figure out why that might be. I'm, I'm betting you have some ideas, Colin. Um, yes. So without a sympathetic media, Israel's powerful military would be next to useless in its attempts to ethnically cleanse Gaza. It relies on crucial Western support for its project and Noah's important in manufacturing consent for Israel as Rupert Murdoch. The Australian-born press baron has close and extensive personal ties to the Israeli political elite and myriad business connections to the country. He has used his media empire to defend Israel and sing its praises even amidst an attack on Gaza commonly condemned as genocidal. As such, his holding effectively served as an unofficial arm of the Israeli propaganda machine. So, the Murdoch machine companies well over a hundred newspapers, some of them among the world's most well-known and influential, as well as dozens of TV channels and a formidable publishing empire. This power allows him to set the political agenda across much of the world. Former British Prime Minister Tony Blair claimed that Murdoch was an unofficial member of his cabinet, and that he was one of the four most powerful men in the UK. President Joe Biden, meanwhile, has described him as the world's most dangerous individual. His influence on American Danger public America. life, I write, through ventures like the Wall Street Journal and Fox News is well documented, less understood, however, are his close ties to Israel, and in particular, to its political re leadership. Um, Pause. So it's like, Biden, he's dangerous. Also Biden, I'm a shell for Israel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, in 2010, Israeli newspaper Yedof Abranoff, Jesus Christ, we gotta work on these names over here, Israelis. Y'all gotta work on some stuff we Westerners can say. Published a leaked list compiled of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, of whom he considers his best sources of campaign contributions. Murdoch's name appears on the list alongside the designation of number two, meaning Netanyahu considered him a close ally and one of the most likely sources of funds. An estimated 98% of Netanyahu's contributions came from abroad. So, yeah, this right here, okay, Bear. Um, a few good names in that list. Uh, right. Donald Trump, Eli Broad, Carl Khan, Robert Kraft, Summer Redstone, Rupert Murdoch right there. Um, if we can see that, Rupert Murdoch, any others that you can see? Um, uh, Haim Saban. Oh, yeah. We, who we've talked before. Yes, we have. Uh, um... I can't read or don't know. Yep. Um, William Davidson, Robert Kraft. Um, yeah, quite a Robert, Robert Perlman, Ronald Perlman, Perlman, whatever you say that guy's name. But anyway, uh, that is the list they are referring to. Um, so at 93. Murdoch has relinquished much of the day-to-day -day running of his businesses to his son, Lachlan. Early this year, Lachlan traveled to Israel to meet Netanyahu and former Prime Minister Benny Gantz. While the details of the meetings remain murky, it is clear that support for the Israeli offensive in Gaza and beyond was the principal topic. 
This was not the first time the younger Murdoch had met Netanyahu. In 2016, he flew to Israel for secret meetings with the Prime Minister, where, according to local newspaper ha Haaretz, has attempted to convince Murdoch to purchase Yedoth Aronoth and to start a Fox News-style TV channel for Israel. Is that Ynet? Can someone in the chat tell me if that's what that is? Um, you know, that what? might be... Like Yedioth Aronoff. I think that's what Ynet is, but I could be wrong. Um so But Netanyahu, however, is far from the only Prime Minister. Yep, it's with, Ynet. Okay. Prime Minister with a close yeah. relationship with Murdoch, Ariel Sharon, for instance, has enjoyed a decades long friendship with the Australian mogul. Murdoch stayed with him on his farm and was treated to a helicopter tour of Israel, where the supposed vulnerability of Israel from its hostile neighbors was stressed. Literally pointing at brown people from a helicopter is what that sounds like. You know? Right. Oh no! That's where they are. <laughs> In this walled prison we've made. Um, In addition to his political ties, Murdoch has several economic commitments to Israel. This is the big part, right? So in 2010, he and banking billionaire Lord Jacob Rothschild, if anyone would like their carrot spread, it is available at the Dollar Tree. Um, <laughs> but Jacob Rothschild... Don't each, tell me you bought that just to make that joke. I've had that just for that joke. What do you mean? <laughs> just to have Rothschild's Moroccan carrot spread um, with real Moroccans. Um, but anyway, um, Jacobs Rothschild each purchased equity stakes in Genie Energy and joined the company's board of directors. While he was on the board, Genie was awarded a contract to drill for oil and gas over approximately 400 square meters, kilometers, which is more than square meters, of Golan Heights, Syrian territory that Israel has illegally occupied. Since 1967, who who would have thought this is about the oil oil fields? Who would have thought, Colin? I mean... Um, <laughs> yeah. So people are seeing my sounds cutting in and out. I'm, I'll try to work on that here in a second. Um, Syrian territory that Israel has illegally occupied since 1967. In effect. Genie was attempting to profit from an occupation deemed illegitimate under international law. So, thoughts so far, Kaber? I mean, Murdoch is a bad dude. Well, Biden said it. Um, yeah. And very powerful. So, and so those of you who don't know, like, um, What's it say? Uh, Pierce, his show, mm. is funded by Murdoch. Right. So it's not, Which we'll even get though to. It's, he claims that he left, you know, mainstream media to start his own, he actually, and I would argue some of those programs were Murdoch's own anyway, his own show now is still owned by Murdoch. So he hasn't, he's not truly independent. So no. that's why he's kind of like, do you do, do you condemn Hamas basically every episode he he's on, you know, with these guests? So, but yeah, but it just shows it just shows how rich and how powerful this guy is that he's able to have that kind of influence in media. Yeah, he makes a lot of sense. You heard of NDS? Um. No. Let's see what it stands for, because we should know that. NDS. Um, Israel. Israel. Yeah. Um, it's like part of Cisco, I think. Um, okay. So, yeah, NDS Technologies. Um, Israel Limited, that kind of stuff. Um will be sold to Cisco for five million, sounds like. Something like that. Five billion, five million. Acquired by Cisco in twenty twelve. Um, but anyway, uh Murdoch also owned Israeli software company NDS, 
which was the center of a hacking scandal that brought down British television company ITV Digital. NDS's activities helped huge numbers of Britons access paid TV for free, causing the corporation to fold under reduced revenues. Another ethnically questionable connection is Murdoch's reliance on lobbying from LLM Communications. The billionaire hired the group, co-funded by Lord Jonathan Mendelssohn, to help them overturn British government laws that ensured trade unions could ballot for workplace recognition. Lord Mendelssohn was the chairman of the Israeli lobbying group, Labor Friends of Israel, which was crucial in smearing and defeating the leadership of Jeremy Corbyn, a lifelong peace activist and proponent of Palestinian rights. In case you're wondering where, how that happened. My ventures in media are not as important as me as spreading my personal political beliefs, Murdoch said, and supporting for Israel and its expansionist policies is one of the core values the Australian has timelessly worked towards. At a 2009 meeting of the American Jewish Committee, he explained that he saw Israel as the linchpin underwriting Western civilization. Civilization, He says, in the West, we are used to thinking that Israel cannot survive without the help of Europe and the U.S. I say to you, maybe we should start wondering whether we in Europe and the United States can survive. We allow the terrorists to succeed in Israel. In the end, the Israeli people are fighting the same enemy we are. Cold-blooded killers who reject peace, who reject freedom, and who rule by the suicide vest, the car bomb, and the human shield. Which is basically the same speech that <laughs> BB gave last week. Yep. Basically. Yep. So, so we talk about anti-Semitism. This is straight up full-throated Islamophobia right here. Yep. But that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. This is okay. But to call out Israel for the war crimes that they're committing is anti-Semitic. Uh huh. Bullshit. And keep in mind who actually uses human shields, but you know, whatever. R um, right. Right. Every you know, accusation is a confession. And, and, and who started the car bomb thing, you know, and who started the suicide accusation vest thing, and who, st it's like, every accusation is a confession. <laughs> where do you think they learned it from, dog? <laughs> like, anyway. Right. Um, in 2005, he wrote the foreword to the book. Israel and the World Changing Lives Through Innovation, a fawning tome lionizing Israel as an unqualified success that has built a robust democracy and a vibrant economy despite setbacks and threats from its neighbors. It's the only democracy in the Middle East, Colin. Um, he also put his money where his mouth is. In 2007, his News Corp business donated to the Jerusalem Foundation, a group that builds illegal Israeli settlements in the West Bank, including in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhoods of Jerusalem, which ICJ just ruled that as illegal, no? Um, yes. If I'm not mistaken. So Murdoch has led the fight against the global boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, claiming that it represents an ongoing war against the Jews. The war has entered a new phase. Is that like the war on Christmas? I feel like that's like the war on Christmas, you know? Like, anyway... This is the soft war that seeks to isolate Israel by delegitimizing it. The battleground is everywhere. The media, multinational organizations, NGOs in this war. The aim is make Israel a pariah. He made those comments at an anti-defamation league event where the organization presented him with its international leadership award that the ADL, which purports to be a group standing against racism, would honor Murdoch with such an award, despite his networks pumping out relentless bigotry, right. underlines how right. little emphasis it places on genuine anti-racism and how much it works to simply promote Israeli interests. I yes, mean, I agree. Yeah, they ain't wrong. Alan McLeod ain't wrong. The ADL is hardly the only Jewish organization that has heaped praise on the media mogul. However, the Simon Weisenthal Center decorated him with the Humanitarian Laureate Award. Other groups, such as the Museum of Jewish Heritage and the American Jewish Committee, have also sung his praises. 
the United Jewish Appeal Federation of New York declared him their humanitarian of the year at a lavish ceremony where Henry Kissinger presented him with the award. I mean, or just kissing his ass. Can basically. you can you get any more like vile humans in a room? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> um, Murdoch took over, took over his father Adelaide's pit newspaper in 1952 and quickly built a giant global enterprise, particularly across the English-speaking world. He used this power to spread his conservative agenda. His British holdings, including the Sun, the Times, and Sunday Times, constitute one quarter of newspaper circulation in the country. His News Corp company also operates Sky Television, Talk TV... Talk Radio, and Talk Sport. Murdoch is widely believed to have swung both the 92 elections for the Conservatives and the 97 elections towards Labour after Tony Blair struck a deal with him. It's difficult to think of a Prime Minister in the last 40 years who has won against the Murdoch instinct, said former Guardian Editor-in-Chief Alan Roosbrigger. Um, so yeah, Talk TV. Maybe don't go there. Maybe don't do that. Because clearly they have ulterior motives. I don't know why that's hard to see. But, you know, um, we just had her on the show, right? Oh, Miss Vanessa Beely. So she says boycott talk TV in regards to Julia, who works over there, Julia Hart Brewer, right? She writes, you are a disgusting tool for establishment. You deny massacre of 45,000 children Zionist history of apartheid, colonial abuse, savagery, and 75 years of ethnic cleansing, you are a disgrace to humanity and complicit in genocide of Palestinians, as are many of the people over there at Talk TV. 4,500, sorry. But, you know, at this point, those numbers are not much different. Um, yeah. But, yeah, just in case people are wondering what they should and shouldn't do. So... In the United States, Murdoch owns influential outlets such as the Wall Street Journal, the New York Post, and much of the Fox Network. This is in addition to only the influential HarperCollins Publishing House. He is known as an unusually hands-on owner, insisting that the tone and political line of all his outlets conform to his thinking. For better or for worse, the News Corp is a reflection of my thinking, my character, and my values, he admitted. This includes wholehearted support for the 2003 invasion of Iraq. We can't back down now where you hand over the whole of the Middle East to Saddam. I think Bush is acting very morally, very correctly, and I think he was going to go on with it, he said. He also made sure that every one of his 175 global newspaper titles expressed similar vociferous support for the invasion. Inside the right industry. Yes. For a second. Mm -hmm. It's just making me think more so now why Kamala was selected yeah. to be president. Uh huh. It, it, because Kamala, and I, well, I don't know Kamala, but I can take a guess. Like, she's very manageable. Like, you can mold her into saying, like, she's an empty suit. She's just essentially there, just to play the part and to do whatever is needed. She doesn't have any more, what well, we've seen this just given her yeah. history. Like she has no morals or principles. She will do whatever she needs to do to get in order to get on top. And so regarding that, but you can also make the argument for anyone politicians, but I think because, well, really her and Trump, they are the figureheads of their parties right now they yep. have to be somewhat they have to be the type of people that can be reasoned with that you can kind of talk to them and say you need to do this and this is why and they will kind of go along with it it's very easy to uh so persuade them to do the things that you want them to do and they won't necessarily critically think about it because it's only going to lead to them making more money or more fame or wh whatever it is. But th that just kind of tells me more so that 
they want Kamala there because she's not going to rock the boat at all. She's not going to question, at least publicly, um, you know, the imperial needs of Israel at all. She's going to say what she needs. And, she, and I think it's with, uh, you know, with Biden, I think given his cognitive co- decline, you know, it what he wasn't, the investment, he was not, no, he was no longer worth the, uh, as of last month. So they got rid of him. Kamala, I think, has always wanted to be president anyway. So it was just a matter of, we'll give you this power, but you need to do our bidding. So, so that's just kind of how I see it with her, especially. But this just makes it very nefarious to me as to, and I'm just speculating here, but I don't think I'm too far off the mark in what I'm saying in terms of, again, going back to, you know, like, I want to see, I, 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 again, I don't know, Kamala, but I feel like, and I only say this because she has her two stepchildren are like Gen Z. Like, granted, they live with their father, who is a Zionist, but I'm fairly certain that th- her stepkids are probably more in line with uh, the pro Palestinian sentiment, possibly, than they are on her father's way of thinking, more than likely. Yeah. So it's not to say that Kamala doesn't hear or understand the Palestinian issue. It's a matter of whether she's going to be the woman that people are looking for her to be in order for her to fight against it. And we know she won't. But, but I think with her, that makes it especially dangerous because she knows... The, the impact that this will have on the Palestinians, but she only cares about her prestige and her look in terms of now that she's basically the number one woman in the uh, Democratic well, Party. Uh, that's what she has wanted you've seen this whole time. Time and time again, candidate after candidate proved to you that the president really has no power. They are controlled by the right. ones with power and they will do their bidding regardless. They are there as PR management. And I'm sorry, but that's about it. Right. And I'm sorry, but Kamala is not that intelligent. No. Like just given what we hear, and I'm only saying this given what we hear from her, that she's not able to justify her morals, her principles at all. Again, but she hasn't. But she has no morals. So she's very easy to manipulate to say whatever or do whatever you know, people who her handlers tell her to do or say. So, yeah, just have that thought immediately in meeting. Right. Because but it just shows how nefarious, especially with media, it is. And again, especially given that a lot of these media organizations are run by one person, like Amazon is Bezos. Um, mm-hmm. You know, all these shows like Fox News, Murdoch. Um, I'm trying to remember the other billionaire who tried to run in 2020. Um, yeah, I know you're talking about. Uh, um, yeah, I can't think of his name, name either. That person, I forgot the name. Uh, but if you guys know in the chat, you can sh- share it. But, you know, it's all these one guys. And it's interesting to say that Murder is basically saying, I want these organs. I want you clearly have your bias. You've admitted you have your bias. And you want your publications to reflect that bias. Yeah. That's not journalism. No. So, so speaking of, inside the industry, Fox known Fox News is known for its particularly strict top-down editorial procedure. One former contributor claimed that working under Murdoch was almost as if we're being monitored by a Stalinist system. It is very much an environment of fear. A second confided that that. if you don't go along with the mindset of the hierarchy, if you challenge them on their attitudes about things, you are history. But it is in his local Australia that his power reaches almost banana republic like proportions. Murdoch owns seven of the country's 12 
national or capital daily newspapers. In half of the country's state or territory capitals, there is no local alternative to the Murdoch publication. Former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd labeled his empire a cancer on Australian democracy. So Right, and again, this kind of goes into... We talked about this earlier, how people were just like willing to jump ship. Yeah. For Kamala and Waltz. It's like they present Waltz as this fluffy teddy bear grandpa, you know, and and again, he has done some nice things, but even with those nice things, I will argue they're not progressive. That's just the floor to me. That's yeah. not necessarily going about. No, it's like, oh, I got school. I got free school lunches for kids. Mm-hmm. Okay, but we should be doing that anyway. A gift, I'm, a I'm gift. Sorry, the, like in the richest country in the world, we should be offering that anyway. A gift to so, the Craft Nabisco not, Company, you know. Right. So, which, uh, funny enough, that's what people are saying. You know, like like in Savvy's chat, that people are telling me, and I want to try and do some research to see if that's true. But it seems like um, Craft may be one of the. Um, like beneficiaries there maybe one of the organized pages yeah that yeah. is actually aligned with uh minnesota school lunches so essentially what i think it was Salamoon was saying that essentially they get lunchables for for lunch yeah so you know so it's like you know so but it's just these corporate it's no it's media it's like but how they can easily control the group bank yeah and we saw this this week it's just mm-hmm. they were so easily to be able to first well and that have a part of that is be i was gonna say part ahead. of that part of that is is that classic media is no longer as influential as it used to be right people like murdoch people right. like you know bezos had control of that already right now it's the you know future frontiers of uh, twitter and facebook and youtube and twitch and kick and rumble and rockfin and you know like this is where people are consuming their media now and if they don't have some control over that that's a problem for them which is what you're seeing it's why you see thousands of bots suddenly show up for something right you know so right yeah like i've gotten more bots since elon took over than i ever had or remember on twitter yeah so and they do it based on an algorithm of things that you might have said or how you words and people so yeah like so be very careful of how you navigate twitter if you especially if you don't want these bots to come at you for certain shit yeah. Um, which I don't do, and now I'm paying the price for it. So, so um, speaking of bots, let's talk about Piers Morgan, who is a terribly built robot. But until he recently went independent with his talk show, Piers Morgan was one of Murdoch's which most he's not right. <laughs> yeah, independent. He's not independent, as right. many places now claim that Kyle and Crystal are independent. independent. <laughs> right. So. Piers Morgan was one of Murdoch's most recognizable anchors. Hosting a popular talk show that reached millions, Morgan has played a crucial role in informing the public about Israel and Palestine. Although he has claimed he is entirely... Go ahead. I mean, it's more like, um, what's the word? Like... Indifferent, almost. It's more the word, yeah. Propaganda. Yeah, usually he lets eight israeli pundits talk down to one you know but pro palestinian right you know it's also very similar to how a couple other fox news anchors just have suddenly entered the independent space i'm i'm looking at all mm-hmm. three of you too i pull no punches on all there you got the tuck tuck you got the candace you've got you know peers here you know y'all were all in bed at that place Who's the other one? Megan, right? Megan. Kelly. Yeah. Like, yeah. 
All of you are propagandists to the highest order. We still see you as that. At least I do. Some people get fooled, but not I, Sam I am. So Morgan is a close number of close connections to Israel worth noting. Hmm, funny that. Firstly, he has supported the Norwood charity on a number of occasions, helping to raise hundreds of thousands for dollars for the group. Norwood is headed by the aforementioned Israel lobbyist, Lord Mendelssohn. Along his wife, Lady Nicola Mendelssohn, I wonder how any of y'all met. Was it dinners at Murdoch's house? What was, you know? Probably. Probably. Most, probably. most likely. Most likely. <laughs> Lady Mendelssohn is also head of global business for social media giant Meta. Meta. Yeah. Parent company of Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram. In case you think that's somehow different. She has consistently lobbied for Israeli causes and even met former President Shimon Perez. During her time at Meta, the company has begun to employ dozens of former agents of the Israeli spying group Unit 8200, which Vanessa mentioned last week, um, all in sensitive positions within the company. They're also at Twitter, too, by the way. Facebook, in particular, has grown closer to Israel, even appointing former general director, the Israeli Minister of Justice, Emmy Palmore, to its oversight board, the group that decides what direction the company goes and what content to allow and disallow on the platform. So that's who's running that department. So Norwood's previous president was Sir Trevor Chin. Chin is currently head of United Jewish Israel Appeal. A British Israeli group. People? Hey, look at that. We got a dono from the Accord Lord for 20 bucks. A little, little heart. Nice of you to leave that. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So, um, British Israeli group whose goal is to increase young British Jews sense of connection to Israel. Wonder what that means. He is also on the executive committee of Britain's largest Israeli group, BICOM, and has funded Labor Friends of Israel. So... So Great friends. basically, he's trying to, so going back to young British Jews sense of connection to Israel. So basically, it's like the groups that go to Israel to for tours and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And just in that probably he's the, like all that kind of stuff that India is talking about. Right. Us. Yeah. So, and uh, astroturfing affairs. And, you know, this is just your youth pastor for Israel, pretty much. You know, basically. Pretty so. Much. On October 22nd, at the height of Israel's attack on Gaza, Morgan met Lady Mendelssohn in New York for dinner. Also present at the meal was Welsh singer Catherine Jenkins, who has raised money for the Jewish National Fund, the largest settler building body in Palestine. It is unclear what they discussed, but given their careers and interests, it is hard to see how news from the Middle East did not arise. Thus, while Morgan may have invited individuals from all points of the spectrum. He does not appear to move in circles, or he does appear to move in circles filled with top Israeli lobbyists. Any questions? Yeah, look at what it's mentioned. It's like media, so, well, social media. Like, yeah. and like, and, and people are like, oh, Jews don't own everything that's anti-Semitic. Well, you're seeing it here. I'm not saying it's that, but it's like, it's very obvious that at least in these cases that many of these people are Jewish are like in these top Israeli slash Jewish organizations that obviously have a lot of power and influence that you're right. They're, they're not going to be meeting with like no. the regular schmegglers. They're going to be meeting among their own because they want to essentially control an empire, that being the Middle East. So whatever they need to do in and pull them, this is Zion, like we've seen this, in, this is Zionism at its finest here. It's well, like want... pulling their money, pulling their resources to manipulate government. Well, like back in the day, manipulate government. Now, in this case, manipulate media, media. to um, to have the sentiment of Israel being like the angels here. But as we have said, it's not necessarily working because yeah. there's far more people who are seeing the bullshit that are willing to speak out against that. 
that goes well, back my... to the idea of banning TikTok. Yeah, that's and I said same like, lobbying if they tried groups, to ban TikTok. Well, I, I would imagine that one of these goons would take it over easily. Easily, they would have been forced to put one of those in, is what would have happened. But look, I, right? Look, jur- journalists, brothers and sisters, look, come, 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 t- come, talk to me real quick. If if you're asked on talk TV, okay, which is owned and funded by Rupert Murdoch, why do you think they want you on? Like, right. do you think it's just because it's an opportunity for you to voice your opinion? No. They want to manipulate no. your opinion and shut right. it down. I mean, the that's fact, what they want. But you know what? Like, someone like Cenk and Hassan, especially, they've gone on Pierce Morgan's show dozens of times. Yeah. They talked about the pro Israel, they've talked about the pro Palestinian cause multiple times. And what are they doing now? Like, acting like SEALs. Yeah. For the Democratic Party. So as Nancy Reagan once said, just say no. Just just say no to talk TV. Just say no. Don't go. It's fine. It's gonna be okay. And that stands for any of its subsidiaries, any of its anybody. If it's the James Whale Lord hour, whatever, like you know, peers, don't go on that show either. Like you know I've said that show is basically the political Jerry Springer. That's really <laughs> what it is now. Yeah. It's, that's what they're hoping for. It is. So. Right. Because it, you know, drama, it brings the views, but like it's easily, it's, I, again, I don't think it's working necessarily, but as I've said, politics is one step to entertainment. Well, and, and look, look who owns your media, please. Any media. Right. Any of them. And don't get too comfortable. Right. It's very easy. But, there's a little more to this. So, unsurprisingly, given what we have seen, Murdoch's top publications have displayed an overwhelming bias in their coverage of Israel's war on Gaza, constantly defending Israeli actions and demonizing both Palestinians and those who have opposed the violence. On October 19th, an Israeli airstrike targeted the Church of St. Porphyrius in Gaza City, where hundreds of refugees had taken shelter. In describing the attack, the Wall Street Journal ran with the headline, Blast Goes Off at Orthodox Church Campus in Gaza, turning what was one of the most notorious incidents in Israel's month-long assault on Gaza into a regrettable accident. At no point during the article right. did the journal suggest that the blast might have been an attack or even hint at Israeli involvement. The journal was right. also led the attack on Americans protesting the onslaught with... Who's behind the anti-Israel protest? Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and the others are grooming activists in the U.S. and across the West. Ran the headline of one story, clearly identified the vilified people opposing genocide as agents of a foreign power. Another story, entitled Welcome to Dearborn, America's Jihad Capital. Feel free to look up what jihad actually means echoed Bush-era levels of Islamophobia in its attempts to equate the heavily Arab-American city with anti-American hatred. Campus demonstrations, meanwhile, were written off as terrorist-glorifying protesters who constitute the left-wing counterparts of the Charlottesville mob that chanted, Jews will not replace us. Ugh. Right. Pause again, like, Van Jones this week, I forgot what he said. What did Van Jones say regarding, like, like a dark underbelly of, uh-huh. like... Anti-Semitism, antisepticism. Is, yeah, it's same this shit. This is what this is. Yeah. This is so, what this is. The newspaper... All this has, bullshit. Also published articles demanding the U.S. go to war with Iran. The U.S. and Israel need to take on Iran directly, make the Ayatollahs pay for sowing chaos through their Hamas, Hezbollah, and Houthi proxies. First of all, that's not where Hamas comes from. Like, it's like every article is just steeped in wrong, first of all. Right. (laughs) Right? But wrote former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, right, who just apparently gets to write in our papers. So, and for Palestine, the Wall Street Journal envisages its future as a giant arms factory, making the weapons for Israel's assault on Iran, 
in an op-ed entitled A Plan for Palestinian Prosperity. Shout out for me and Indy for covering that one. Columnist Andy Kessler wrote that producing the weapons for the next Israeli attack would bring middle-class jobs to Gaza. They even can work on Saturdays and without handouts from the politicized UN, he claimed, although he cautioned... Hold on, let me... Let me give some preface here, because mm -hmm. I think Vanessa said this in the Arabic world, like the weekends are Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah. So the idea that they're working on a Saturday is almost it's like it's basically their equivalent of a six or seven day work week. week, week. Right. So. So just to give that. Yeah. Thursdays are also involved with that weekend for them, right? um i think yeah but it's like the weekend like yeah the weekend in the Arab, it's friday saturday like yeah. that's when shops are closed like here generally it would be like <laughs> on a saturday sunday there will be like on a friday saturday here's so, here's the funny bit he um, claimed anyway. although he cautioned that perhaps the explosives should be added elsewhere by more trustworthy employees which is just chef's kiss on the racism on that one um but murdoch's other publications have follow suit relentlessly supporting israel and demonizing its critics fox news for example spread the now debunked assertion that palestinian fighters beheaded 40 israeli babies on october 7th in reality no babies were beheaded although israeli bombs or bullets have since decapitated countless palestinian children the New York Post, meanwhile, published a remarkable article titled Just How Many of Gaza Civilians Are Entirely Innocent. What a fucking title. Um, in which it repeatedly insinuated that essentially every adult in Gaza was a legitimate target, even using the word civilian in scare quotes. On Israel, Palestine, journalists and corporate media are under enormous pressure to toe an ownership-imposed line. The New York Times, for example, has told its reporters not to employ words such as genocide, slaughter, and ethnic cleansing when discussing Israel's actions. It is even forbid forbidden the use of terms like refugee camp, occupied territory, or even Palestine, making virtually impossible to report accurately on the situation. Yeah, I, I don't know how you put up with that as a journalist, but... Murdoch publications are surely no different. Indeed, this sort of stifling censorship has been in place for decades. If former employees are to be believed, in 2001, Sam Kiley, former correspondent for the Times of London, revealed that he was instructed never to refer to Israel as assassinating or executing their opponents. And when he was tasked with interviewing an Israeli army unit responsible for killing a 12-year-old Palestinian boy, he was asked to file the article without somehow mentioning the dead child at all. How? That's the story. I mean, hint. <clears throat> yes. Good job. Same yep. thing. Yep. So they got any coverage, and then they, even in the media, they got her age wrong. They misaged her and whatever else, and like. Yep. No one knows about the story at all. No. And then I brought that up to people. And it's like, well, that's Hamas's fault. Like, <laughs> no. Like, yes, they've they've recruited like a six year old girl into their evil den of lies. What do you what? Like, this is not a fucking no, cartoon. But it's the folks. Idea, like all of this, all this confusion would not be happening if it wasn't for Hamas. That's the argument. Yeah. For some of these people, which is I ridiculous frequently yell at so yeah. so the nine month long israeli attack on gaza has inspired outrage across the world while its standing has dropped even further in the global south israel still maintains a considerable base of support in the west this is down in no small part thanks to oligarchs such as rupert murdoch who have marshaled their considerable resources to fight a committed media war in support of the israeli state attempting to hide its atrocities and shore up support for its expansionist project. For Israel, which could not continue in its current form without outside support, particularly from the U.S., the battle for public opinion is every bit as important as the fight on the ground, 
Fortunately for Netanyahu and his ilk, they can rely on Rupert Murdoch, who has for decades championed Israeli cause and is now pushing his media empire into overdrive to defend the indefensible. If the pen is indeed mightier than the sword, then Rupert Murdoch is one of Israel's most powerful weapons. Any questions, Colin? Yeah. Concerns, thoughts? No question. I mean, I mean, concerns abound, but like, <laughs> you know, um, but I, I, I think shout out to Alan for reporting on this, but yeah, it just kind of proves how strong and how manipulated we really are. I mean, again, we've seen this even within the last week and a half, how quickly people are able to kind of fall in line and like reading mainstream media. Like we saw it like with Kamala, like essentially being having her be okay when five years ago, like she was not a top candidate at all. Like people just seemingly forgot about that. And now we have this guy and funny enough, and I know you don't like Kyle, but he was making the case for um, Tim Waltz. As far as I know, he didn't mention anything about his pro-Israel views. But this was a guy that said that Gaza was his red line. From uh -huh. So it's like, you know, it's all in terms of money and power and control. For, uh, for the control for us, at least. But like for everyone else, it's like for money and prestige. And it's just very sick that this is the reality of us, you know, like, of having to, and we kind of even, even in independent media scene, you know, the fact that like someone like Brie, and she said it, like she was willing to work on the Hill. She knew she was going to get fired at some point, but it's not to say like the Zionists at the Hill, I, I don't entirely know, but like, you know, but there was, for her, there was control. Like she wasn't able to talk about Gaza or any Palestinian like, cause in a way that she wanted to. Um, and, you know, she ended up, obviously she ended up getting, you know, laid off like when too much was too much. So, yeah. but it, but again, the good thing is I think this propaganda, this push, this pull to kind of make Israel like, like the good guys isn't working. Um, like younger people, especially, are seeing through the bullshit and they're trying their best to fight against it in whatever way we can. And my only encouragement to you guys, I'm not sure if we really have Gen Z watchers in the chat, but if you're ever watching this at some point and we still are dealing with this issue of Israel, keep pushing. You know, it is working because now they have to try and you know, they are not, Israel is not getting any support right now. The world is basically standing with Palestine right now and it's driving them crazy. Like they're trying to figure out what other means they can to manipulate the situation and people are not standing for it. So I just wish there was a way that we can kind of actively kind of collect that consensus in terms of Israel being assholes and actually using that as a way to actually overthrow them in our media, in our literature, like everything we just kind of consume, like to eradicate them from our consciousness. Yep. Well, I mean, I wonder why we're demonetized, Colin. It might not have anything to do with things we just said. Um, you know, if you want to get around that system a bit, you can scan that QR code on your screen or go to codashfee.com slash Indie News Network. Links in the description. As always, if you're in that live chat, you can put exclamation mark donate in the chat. You can get that if you want to. But if you can't give to us because you're one of the poors like ourselves, just like and subscribe. Try to share the stream. We're heavily suppressed. So getting this to your like-minded friends certainly would help us you know, and leave a comment. Allegedly, all that engagement does some stuff. But otherwise, you know, thanks for watching.